All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the solubility of ionic compounds. So the main question that we're asking ourselves is, will the compound, will the ionic compound dissolve in water or won't it dissolve in water? So a soluble ionic compound is one that dissolves in water, while a, an insoluble ionic compound is one that does not dissolve in water. So if I have a soluble ionic compound such as sodium chloride, for instance, and I react that with water, or if I just dissolve it in water, then I'll get sodium ion, which is aqueous, and chloride ion, which is also aqueous. And this is, this is what the equation looks like for all soluble compounds. Now if my compound is insoluble, like if I have an insoluble compound such as silver chloride, for instance, AgCl, and I put that in water, then I'll just get AgCl. There won't be any dissolution. It won't dissolve. So now what we're going to do now is we're going to discuss some rules on determining whether or not a compound, an ionic compound, is soluble. And there's really no easy way. You just kind of have to follow the rules. And some of the rules are long-winded, and some of them have a lot of them have exceptions. So just you know, bear through it. First off, all compounds containing lithium ion, sodium ion, potassium ion, nitrate ion, and acetate ion are all soluble. So this is the easiest rule because there's no exceptions to this rule. Uh, let's go over a second rule. And that is, compounds containing chloride ion, bromide ion, and iodide ion are soluble, except when these ions are paired with silver ion, Hg2 2 plus ion, or the lead 2 ion. So, unless the compound has these three ions in it, then it's going to be soluble. Otherwise, it'll be insoluble. Compounds containing the sulfate ion, SO42 minus, are soluble except when the sulfate ion pairs with the strontium ion, barium ion, lead 2 ion, silver ion, or calcium ion. So if it pairs with any of these ions, then the compound will be insoluble, not soluble. Otherwise, it'll be soluble. So those that, that just about does it for the rules. Uh, on soluble ionic compounds. Now let, let's look over uh, some compounds that are generally insoluble. Compounds that contain hydroxide ion, OH minus, are insoluble except when the hydroxide ion pairs with lithium ion, sodium ion, potassium ion, ammonium ion, calcium ion, strontium ion, or barium ion. Our next rule Compounds containing the sulfide ion, S2 minus, are insoluble except when the sulfide ion pairs with lithium, sodium, potassium, ammonium, calcium, strontium, or barium ion. So the rule for the, sulf for the uh, sulfide ion is actually very, very similar to the rule for the hydroxide ion. So the same ions are listed. The only difference, however, is that when the hydroxide ion pairs with calcium, strontium, or barium, the resulting compound is said to be slightly soluble. So slightly soluble means not quite soluble, not quite insoluble, just somewhere in between. And there's one last rule. And that rule is compounds containing carbonate and Phosphate ions are insoluble except when these ions pair with lithium ion, sodium ion, potassium ion, or ammonium ion. So that just about does it for the solubility rules. Um, another thing that I wanted to bring up uh, before I end the video is that solubility, I mean, the classification into soluble or insoluble is actually an oversimplification. It, it, what's really going on is solubility is actually a continuum. So even some compounds, even many compounds that are uh, classified as insoluble still do dissolve in water to a certain extent, but not nearly as much as the ones that are termed soluble. So 
Soluble and insoluble is just two general groups that we lump everything into, but really there's a continuum of solubility. So there you go. There is the solubility rules and just a general discussion on solubility of ionic compounds.